Hey, good morning, good morning. It is Friday morning. Friday morning love here from the Churchtown Church of God. Boy, did I ever catch it yesterday for doing that whole wedding thing. I was chastised that I do not make fun of weddings at Churchtown. Oh my goodness gracious. Now, it was kind of, people were uh, good-naturedly. A couple of folks you see in the comments said, hey, I was married in that church. That's not what it sounded like. But boy, I got a little bit of ribbing about making fun of being, not making fun of, I was just, you remember? Because I shouldn't do it again, but you know me, I'm going to. Dun, dun, dun. This is what it's like being married at Churchtown. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, you look so handsome, honey. And people were like, that's not what it sounded like. I was like, oh my goodness. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Miss April. God bless you. What a day yesterday. We have a friend, a member of our family named Robert Banks. He's checked in here many times. If you could write down Robert Banks in your prayer journals right now. He was diagnosed with appendicitis. Dale, tell us what's going on, brother. You're at the emergency room? I don't know what's up with you. Robert is in the hospital um, having emergency... Yeah, I guess it's not an emergency, like get him in there this minute, but an appendectomy. Robert Banks, his dear wife, Melissa, is pregnant and uh, about six months along. So we've got to pray for them and the future, the immediate future for them as well. They're working hard, making it happen. Father God, we do reach out to our brother Dale this morning and his family. We reach out to Robert this morning and for every spiritual and physical and emotional need that is brought to us today. Father God, we turn it to you through your son, Jesus Christ. We know that you are interceding on our behalf. And so we give ourselves to you this morning. Our dear Lord, thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, how about it, uh, Bill? So I'll be contacting the leadership team to see if uh, the banks need anything. Uh, you know, um, you know how that is. A couple, you don't work, you don't get paid, and then something like this happens. And so we'll be seeing, um, oh no, someone's blowing up my, my phone. Let me go back and say hello to everybody. People came on very quickly this morning. Andy, I called Beretta. They wanted to walk me through tearing it apart, the, the magazine, um, which I already had, and um, that sort of thing. So I said, no, thank you. Uh, you, I have already shared with you that I can be impulsive, and I was very kind. I just said, no, thank you, and I hung up, and I talked to my wife. <laughs> this is a good woman, people. She said, oh, the Beretta, that's one of your favorite pistols, and I said, yeah, and she said, go ahead and get a magazine, so I went and ordered a new magazine from Beretta, and it came in two days, so there we go. We're hooked up. I need one more. I need one more. I need three. Hey, if Olivia or Kelly are watching right now, take me off of that text message. You're blowing up my phone. Okay, here's what's going on. Wife has some extreme back pain. Okay, hopefully that is um, diagnosable and immediately treatable. That's what we're praying for, wisdom from God into the heart and the minds of the physicians diagnosing and taking care of that issue. God bless you, Dale. Thank you for checking in. Thank you for bringing that before us. Xavier, how are you? Michelle, always checking in on me. She makes my heart happy. You all do, and many of you do. We check in on each other. Like, you know, it's really cool. I like this so much. Um, this is our ministerium. Is that what it's called? And I, I wrote in the Churchtown Weekly this week, Oh, yes. Prayers, 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 Lord. We talked about that the other day. Why do we pray? Why wouldn't we pray? Is really, when I thought about that entire conversation and the theological reasons and the practical reasons and the demonstrations from Scripture, the answer really is, why wouldn't you pray? Doesn't the Lord just present it such that the bot, when you get to the bottom line, you're like, of course we're going to pray. Why wouldn't you pray? And, and then you can go on and talk about all kinds of different things and reasons and theological, theology, theology this and theology that. 
But why wouldn't you talk to your Lord? He's alive. He's alive. We're not on our knees making a burnt offering to a dead idol and then eating it ourselves. You know, it's, he's alive. We're talking to him. And, and again, I go back to that analogy that we talked about with those human beings that you have the most intimate relationships with, your spouses, your children, your parents, those sorts of things. You don't talk to them. You may have been married 30 years and you know your spouse inside and out, right? You're working on that PhD. You're almost there. You stop talking to them. Yeah. Duh. Come on, Christians. Let's get praying like we should. Like we should. So snow covered broad top. Oh, you got snow. I, you know, here's my thing. Susie and I are fighting right now. Yes, it's true. Even the best relationships have their ups and downs. I'm looking at her right now. Because she, God bless her, she hates the bad weather. And she won't poop. <laughs> She'll just like, and even though she will go out and get soaked, here is the thing. She'll go out and get soaked. But she hates being there, so she freezes up. And she's like, mm, mm. I'm like, oh, please, just poop and let's go. Is this too much information? So we're looking forward to our walk today. I'm sure Susie is looking forward to her walk today. She has incredible self-discipline. Did you see my shirt? Here, check this out. <laughs> You'll like this shirt. Word. It's hot in here. Word. <clears throat> Do you know what I would like to talk about? That little article. I'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Hello, Barbara. Yeah, I guess so. I never had a little dog. So, you know, like, oh, even Sadie in her totally advanced years, even having to sometimes put a towel around her belly and help her. She's like, time to go out. Yep. Yep. Back in the house. Got the job done. I'm like, yeah, good girl. This one? So we'll see. Hot cocoa and peppermint mocha creamer while watching live with Warner, who talks mostly about... <laughs> Three in one particular. Oh, the three in one particular. I like the way you did that, Xavier. The three in one celebrity. Huh? That's God, right? right? It's a God reference. I got you. I got you. Uh, oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, Dale. Oh, my. Somebody said that behind the curve. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. I'm fired up today. Because we're heading into the weekend, we're heading into John 13 here at Churchtown. We're heading into a great, uh, oh, great worship and music, and I'm so excited about the service, and I, I always am. So excited about the prayer service. Um, it has been, uh, it has grown and developed into something that is just incredibly wonderful, so enjoyable, and people treat it. With, I don't know, it's just, it has, and especially a few weeks ago, I, like I said, I, I really stopped calling it part of the service. And we, 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 we take that time of intentional fellowship, and then we move into, and it's, it's obviously still a part of it, but it is this, it has conceptually become its own thing, a prayer service. And so it, it, it's really neat that we all get back together and then we begin to talk and we begin to anoint and we begin to pray and we pray and we pray out loud. And I just really want to encourage that sort of healthy connection and healthy prayer out loud verbally. Uh, again, laying on of hands, anointing, all the things that we bring to the table in prayer, opening up, of course, everything that he brings to the table in prayer and that connection Right When those two worlds meet 
the secular and the sacred in an open heart like that. Oh, I sound like that commercial. It is power. It is power. And I'm not talking about a falling uh, on the floor and acting drunk power. I'm talking about the supernatural power of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ and just knowing. And sometimes, how about this? Sometimes just knowing, sometimes just knowing that you're not alone. But the power that is in that, knowing you're after a week of the enemy driving you into a corner and, and slapping you around a little bit and you are, you're standing tall, you're standing powerful on the word of God, but man, you're, you've been taking it instead of making it all week. You know what I'm saying? And then you come in and you're there with your family and you're surrounded by the physical people. You're surrounded by the spirit of God. You're surrounded... You're like, yeah, you know what, man, how did I ever fall into that frame of thinking on Thursday and Friday? Right? You know, that is what it's all about. And that really, that really, um, when, when you experience that together, and I as pastor experienced that right along with everybody. And, and here's the thing, you know, I shared in the Churchtown Weekly, I said some churches seek to have, hey, Richard, seek to have an associate pastor or two. But I believe the biblical model is you have as many associate pastors as you have committed individuals who are investing in the fellowship. So if I look out there and I see 65 and everyone is invested in the fellowship, well, I have 65 associate pastors. So let's go. Let's do what we are led to do. Let's, let's live the word, let's preach the word, let's pray for one another, let's support one another physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's what we are called to do. 65 associate pastors. And so when we, when we open up the service to sing and to read and to preach and to worship, I want that to be open and I really want the voices of all of the associate pastors here to be able to be heard. And when we do that in prayer, and this is the next avenue where I really would, I'm praying for growth here at Churchtown and with the Chamley. And, and when we do that, that somebody, that I'm, that I'm able to sit in the pew with my wife and experience that service as another associate pastor leads and guides and directs. That we can truly be there and serve one. Not that the congregation is not there for me, but you know the dynamic. You know, if you're always there and you're doing that, it's, it's different. People check in on me. I'm, I do not feel, I'm not feeling isolated, all of those things. But I really, plus, when you are in that leadership role, when the Lord says, rise up, rise up, right? When he, when he, when he points his finger at somebody in the congregation and says, rise up and pray and pray for this person, when you experience that as an individual, so as, as the leader, as the pastor, I can squelch that. I can say that is not allowed, or I can tacitly say that is not allowed. I want to overtly and openly say that that is allowed so that individuals can experience that anointing. And, and, and somebody says something or is praying for somebody that you would never suspect that was on their hearts. That's impactful because other people are going, how does, why is that person now reaching out to, I didn't even know that they were friends. Well, most of us are friends here at church, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, power, power. Talked about fellowship, Liz. There's the fellowship and that is an intimacy that, it has, to, it has to be organic. It has to be natural. It has to be based in the word of God. It has to be like, uh, I think Jeff and, um, and Steve both said the other day, it has to be in the spirit of God or it will fall apart. If it is just you and I being humans with one another, then... All bets are off, and we will be nasty toward one another. <laughs> There's no, you know. Um, no, not really. 
Um, unless you're saying something. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Denise. Hi, Susan. So we, we talk about that. I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking, too, this morning. And, I, and, and so when we, again, the, the, as we look at the vision for your fellowship, what, what's happening there, and, and this is what we've been talking about all week. Like, I, I don't want to do this. I do not want to go in this direction if it is not our DNA, if it is not who we are being called to be in Christ. I don't want to do it for the sake of doing it, but I want to catch his vision. I want to live in his will, and I want to be able to allow him, because of what we say, submit to the will of God, right? Seek Christ first and allow him in the power of his Holy Spirit to serve his people through you. And, not, and here's the thing, not just through you, dear pastor, but in the fellowship, in the family, serving in a myriad of ways that you as pastor could not even imagine because there's a myriad of people out there with a myriad of gifts and abilities and perspectives. And that one over there is exactly what this one over here needs to hear. And you, of course, never thought, you know, but God knows. And he's like, I'm going to connect to this one here with that one over there. If only you will create an environment in which that connection can really come through. Like be there, be available. And that individual's like, I don't know, I've never even really spoken to them, but I, I need to go over and pray with them. And, then, and you see that, and someone will come up and say, so-and-so came to me today. To, Did you tell them what was going on? No. How'd they know? Well, <laughs> God knows, <laughs> or that sort of thing. You know, They don't know a particular situation, but they put their hand on their shoulder and say, I want to pray for your relationship with your daughter. What, how did you know? Who's telling what? God's telling. It's pretty cool stuff. That's a poo to say the least, right? Jane, how's your pneumonia? Getting better, hon? Hon. We said that last night. We had a young couple over that was married last November. Um, just to check up on them. Not to check up on them, but just to check in with them, I should say. Just check up on them too, right? So we had them over for dessert last evening, and we're talking. And they're so young. They're in their early 20s, and they're just, they're just crushing this marriage thing, loving it and, and all of those. And, and I'm like, the old, the old, it makes you feel like the old guy. And I'm like, I'm like my dad now because I'm like, oh, how, <clears throat> how's marriage going, hon? You know, I was like, when did this happen? But we talked about that before too on here. The language that we carry forth. I mean, I think an individual can tell when it is meant to be in a, a creepy way or uh, a condescending way or a negative way. And when an individual is just like, hey, hey, sweetheart, are you okay? If you're talking to a, a teenage girl in the congregation, you, you, you need to be super careful with how you present. And so you're conscious of those things. But, you know, Father God, whatever is going on with Jane and this new pneumonia, this infection, she's calling the doctor again, Father God. We place her in your hands we place the, the diagnosis of the physician in your hands, the choice of medicine in your hands, that by the end of this day, Jane Simpson will be feeling better and doing better. In the name of Jesus, you walk that path, Jane. Be faithful. I know you are. I know you are. All right, hold on. I got to get the, the associate pastor here at Churchtown. So... That the, the, the simple article that I put out there, I believe it was church leaders again, um, and uh, that talked about that informal kind of survey of what non-Christians think about Christians and think about church. It reminds me, it reminds me of an informal survey I did for the MTI, the Minister Training Institute, that is a part of the Eastern Region Conference, which is... Registering for classes right now, by the way. Contact Steve Dunn. Contact me. I'll put you in touch with him. We're fighting. Pastor Susie and I are fighting because she won't poop. You make me go out and stand in the pouring rain for 20 minutes. 
well, maybe not 20 minutes, but I'm going to exaggerate because I'm mad at you and you don't poop. You just sit there and look at me. Get me out of here. <sighs> See how angry I am at her? That's it. <laughs> um, and I remember because I, I received well over 100 responses. I did Facebook and Instagram. I, I wrote emails and I spoke to people in person. And I charted the results. And a couple of the questions were, um, what do you expect of your pastor in church? And of course, that was more for the folks that weren't pastors. And the number one response, which made me think of this survey as well, the number one, overwhelmingly, by a super wide margin, the overwhelming response was, I need to know that they have a real relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If that is in place, then I can trust what they're saying. That makes an awful lot of sense in the context of the, the survey that I put out there as well. <laughs> she wasn't, I guess she wasn't. <laughs> Dennis, hashtag help, free pastor Susie. Yep, <laughs> only Dennis would see that. It wasn't a chokehold. Oh, that's it, look out. Mm -hmm. She's, see, she's mean, vicious dog. She's going for my ear. <laughs> and when I think of that, because I remember also the few, probably five parenthetical responses from laypersons who say, I don't have that now. Like our pastor is a good leader. He's a good, or she is a good teacher. He or she is a good speaker. Very dynamic, but there is no sense of authority there. And that's really what it boils down to, spiritual authority. The scripture speaks in the church and in marriage, in the home, about this idea of spiritual authority. It talks about the anointing of Christ. And who is this individual who speaks with such authority? Isn't he just the carpenter's son, the one from Nazareth? Right? How can, he be who, how can he be an individual who speaks with such authority? Well, we know how. It's by the power of God's Holy Spirit, inspired in a congregational setting and inspiring. Inspiring, I always use that word and I break it up like that, inspiring, because it comes from, it is a religious term, meaning in the spirit. In, if you are inspired, you are full of the spirit. So inspired leadership, inspired congregation. Liz, inspired fellowship is what we're talking about. And we're talking about, and we know that, right? We know that when we're sitting and listening to one who is speaking with authority, Right? Not sit down, shut up, or I will throw you out of here, authority. But the authority that comes from, from the inside out. The authority when somebody is um, uh, uh, rightly dividing the word of God, rightly, and bringing forth and preaching the word by the power of God's Holy Spirit. When a congregation engulfs itself in prayer, and, it, and that fellowship is inspired and there is an authority there's a spiritual authority that has flowed in the correct manner and each individual thus because of that because hearts are open because it is biblical each individual can taste of this power of this authority can sense it can feel it can it can engulf them they can they it can invest them it can invest he can invest himself in them and great, Liz, that's a fantastic point because you cannot receive authority because you cannot receive the power of God's Holy Spirit without a measure, obviously, of vulnerability. Regardless of your background, regardless of where you've been, regardless of what you have done, 
All of my pastor friends there, how many times have you heard, pastor friend or not, I can't go to church, the walls will fall in. Everybody will get hit by lightning. I don't belong, but really that speaks to it. I kind of say that glibly, but it speaks to a deeper spiritual condition where the enemy has filled that individual with lies that Brian Warner somehow is good enough to be in church and this individual is not. And that is the, one of the primo lies of Satan. It also can be a cop out and all of those different things, but that individual first, any individual, must first make themselves vulnerable Not just when you give your life over to God's Holy Spirit, when you give your life over to the reality that Jesus is the Christ of God, but even to enter the door. And my point throughout all of this talk about church is when an individual, unchurched individual, we can see that they have these ideas in mind. Is Because the, the big thing is, whether you're looking at a congregation, whether you're looking at a, a pastor, whether you're looking at another Christian in, a line, in the line at Walmart, right? Is it authentic? Is it real? Is this stuff even real? And when, uh, in, and, uh, just use this example here, an individual, unchurched individual comes and says, whoa, this is real. These folks are submitted. These folks had be, have become vulnerable to the Lord first, and now they are allowing themselves to be open and vulnerable with one another. They actually trust one another with this stuff. That has a super, super powerful impact that there can be a different way of being, that you don't have to run around with this giant ego shield all the time fighting with people that you can say, you know, first and foremost, I am a son of the most high God. Lord, what does that look like today? So you go through your day and you have this odd situation and that odd situation and this odd person and that odd person. And and you, oh, this is what it's looking like today. Lord, show me, you know, anyway. I think that there's a very, uh, and go ahead and interact with the video, share it if you want, those sorts of things. I gotta say that, right? This This is how so many people are hearing about it. No, vulnerability, and see, this is when we talk about Christ setting the religious world, all of that stuff on its ear, this is what we're talking about. Your strength, how, you know, how does strength, how does the supernatural strength of the God of the universe, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is in you? How does that happen? Through weakness. In order to receive that, you must set your ego aside and become vulnerable. Then you gain power. Right? He's, he's set everything of that. We are taught in brokenness to fight back with. He says, give it to me, and I will actually show you power that you can't imagine. I'll show you what creation really is. And it's going to open your eyes. There's no doubt about that. Remember that... I read, read it in a book recently, and there was an Israeli prime minister, and it was it Netanyahu, I can't remember, who said, the problem with you Americans is that you no longer believe in evil. You know what I'm saying? There's a different worldview from, an, from, a, from a theocracy, so to speak, like Israel, and then a secular progressive society like the United States. And when you no longer have that complete Christian worldview of good and evil, of the spiritual and the natural, of all of those things, you lose perspective and you start thinking, yeah, we've got this. Every, uh, you know, when you look at communism, when you look at socialism, when you look at even authoritative, authoritarian governments, The promises are always for a utopian society 
where there is no more fill in the blank. You know, murder, rape, exploitation. Here's how many times, if left to our own devices, here's how many times that has worked in all of human history. But yet we continue to, you know, the devil, Satan, continues to make those promises and tries to develop those cultures. Okay. As a matter of fact, it led to 200 million murders, 200 million murders in the name of those political systems in the 20th century. But yet we are, like a dog goes back to vomit, we're drawn, we're drawn primarily to that vision. It's being pushed in our own country right now, this vision that it's all going to be just wonderful. The human beings left to our own devices are never wonderful. Okay, there you go. Ah, I was late joining you. I was posting about weakness. Oh, it's a God thing. Well, okay. Do we, don't, do we need to fight about that? Um, okay. So that's what we're talking about here. So when we, when we see that, they want to know that their pastor has an authentic relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and there is an authority there that flows by the power of God's Holy Spirit that makes the difference. We don't make the difference. And this speaks into our conversation earlier because we can create right, a, an entertainment environment, a, a, a theotainment. We can base things in the Bible, but really, really let it play out like a night in an amphitheater and really, really, really draw people and there is no spiritual authority. You can be talking about Jesus. You can make, be making biblical references. You can call it a church. You can do all of those things. It, if it is not inspired by the word of God, inspired by his Holy Spirit, then what's the point? The point is to be popular. The point is to have all of the measures that you have in any secular business or environment. And that's not the point of the church. To You're at odds. But we're doing it in the name of Jesus. Gotcha. Matthew 7 was my reference. Well, I'm going Matthew 12 because my brain goes nuts as well. You did all of these things in the name of Jesus, but you never knew me. You never spoke with authority. So, hmm, is, is that your weight there at the hospital you're talking about? I want because I wrote. I actually wrote these down yesterday. I read that article. I thought about it. I read all of your responses. Well, I, I wish that I could help you with that. I wish I, the wait to find out what's going on. But we know that there's going to be healing. We know that it's going to be a positive outcome. You, know, you please let us know. The perception, let's, let's finish with this today, because we, we, that, that sense of authority is what we talk about with when we submit ourselves to the will of God. You cannot have authority in this sort of, I, I'm trying to find a way to describe it. The word esoteric came to mind meaning that you can't really define it, but you know it when you experience it. So you're, you, I don't stand up there, or a pastor doesn't stand up there, or somebody, and say, look, well, some do. Some do, and this is usually how you can tell that they're a false prophet, a false teacher, 
because they'll stand up there and say, look, had a conversation with God last night, like Moses did, evidently. And here is what he told me, and I'm speaking with his authority. You may be duped into believing that, but when you have that sense of authority, I, I see it as we see it in Scripture, the reference that I made. Who is this? Isn't he the carpenter's son? How can he speak with such authority? Like we know it, we sense it, soul to soul, spirit to spirit. God's Holy Spirit is speaking through an individual and moving the spirits of the individuals who are hearing. That's when you know. We talk about that is possible when an individual is submitted and congregations are submitted. And I think that fits in well with our previous conversations this week. It fits in well with why we can't just go on autopilot as churches. We can't. We can't just go on autopilot. We can't just neglect prayerful submission to the will of God, what would you have of us? And go with a bunch of good ideas or what we think would be good ideas. Does that make sense? The other big idea, the other thing that really struck me, and I'd, I'd like to go through most of these, this week, next week, all of that, is that Christians are against. Now here is how those who have grown to control the culture in America Control the culture through controlling the language. Non-Christians and, and anti-Christians, so there's a difference, I believe, in non-Christian. I'm a non-Christian. You'd be a Christian. I don't care. And anti-Christian. Those Christians suck. Right? White evangelical men literally are the Antichrist. That sort of thing. The, the, the big idea that is in there, they're always, Christians are always talking about what they're against, not what they're for. And I think that this and the idea of speaking with a sense of authentic authority, or speaking not with a sense of, but speaking with authentic authority, go hand in hand. Because if you are speaking with that, if you, there is an anointing in that individual's life, and there is that sense that there is a supernatural authority here. It can begin, or it does, overcome that negative learning, teaching about Christians. Because here is this individual presenting the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. And what church is and what church looks like and what individual submission is and what individual submission looks like. And what the Christian life is and what it isn't. And, it, and if that, you know, because, you know, if, if there's an individual that's just up there claiming to speak with authority who is just bashing other human beings, that, um, that's probably not it. Okay, here we go. Let's read some of this stuff. who's in the hospital with pneumonia is that he is slowly improving, waiting for the doctors to determine what type of bacteria pneumonia is. Yeah, it is. Amen. Let's get Anthony out of the hospital. Let's get Anthony out of the hospital. Naive to the reason to her back pain. Oh, has she gone to Mr. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you guys for taking care of each other. Good, 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 taking care of each other. So a couple of things to think about as we move into the weekend. I hope that you've had a few things to think about. Speaking with a sense of authority that only comes, and this is, this, it doesn't matter, pastor, non-pastor, this is Christian, non-Christian living in, speaking with, living, demonstrating, right? The authority that is inherent 
in an inspired individual. Everybody recognizes that. Christian, non-Christian, anti-Christian. Oh, man, doesn't it? Knowing that I have so, uh, this, and I know, Bill, you don't like this word either, but this community is important to me. Important to me. Pastors, am I, am I right about that? Don't you, by the weekend, feel as though Satan has kicked you into a corner? Don't you feel like Muhammad Ali on the rope to dope? Regardless of this resurrection power with which you live, there are times. And I'm, I'm very happy to say in my spiritual growth in life that more often than not, I just look at the devil and give him the theological and metaphorical middle finger and go on. Say, no thanks, I used to fall for that, but I don't. But there are still times. There are still times. And that's when I know that I am in community with others who are submitted in a, to the God's authority. Right? And that, that's, like I said, sometimes an individual just knowing they're not alone brings them up out of that corner. Like, yeah, you know what, you're right. Good heavens, why am I thinking this way? Change your thinking, move forward. You right? Gotcha, I agree with that too. And then the, the idea of, are we presenting all that we are against? I know that culture, I know that the world, I know that the enemy, that's exactly, right? Talk about any evangelical Christian today and what's the first thing that you will hear from non-Christians and anti-Christians? They are homophobic, Islamophobic, racist, bigoted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We are against everything and everybody who is not us. And that is exactly the opposite. So we know that that is a lie straight from hell because it is the exact opposite. For God so loved the world. All have fallen short of the glory of God. And our message is turn. God loves you and wants to redeem you. I hope that message is being, being preached in your churches this weekend. I hope that God's Holy Spirit indwells you as individuals and thus inspires the congregations into which you are invested. And the face of his bride turns to him and he is pleased. I pray that wherever you are, whatever you're, wherever you go this week, if you are a lay person, if you are a leader, carry that inspiration with you and help the bride of Christ turn and face her groom and make him proud, happy, pleased, blessed. Father, that's what we pray for. We pray for the physical and the spiritual needs of all of those who have been brought forward in our conversation this morning. And all of that, all of those who are unspoken right now. Father, we pray for your church as we move into this weekend. We know that we worship over the weekends formally in congregation. And we pray that your bride this weekend will honor you, not embarrass you. That hearts will be submitted, hearts will be turned, that new hearts will submit themselves to you. And let the authority of God's Holy Spirit pour forward through individuals and through churches and thus around the world globally. It begins with us. It begins with who we are as individuals 
in the word of God right now. In Jesus' name, let it be so, Lord. Let it be you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Guys are awesome, fantastic. I hope that you have incredible Fridays. I wish that I could give a better weather report. Hey, Debbie, we are just checking out, uh, but uh, you can check it a little bit later. Um, so anyway, I wish I could give you a better weather report for today. I'd love to get out and do something. I'm going stir crazy. You're going stir crazy. Dale, please let us know about your dear bride. And um, Jane, if you're still there, please keep us posted as well. God bless you guys. Thank you for praying with me. Do you know what a, you know what a takeaway that is from just feeling that and knowing that? Oh, yes. Go out and get them this weekend. In the name of Jesus, of course. Peace.